Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Conversation with Sarah. And as you can see, I'm having next to me one of the most beautiful and most amazing, strong, yet soft dawns in UK, Mistress Courtney. Hello, love. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me on your channel. I'm so excited to be involved. Thank you for accepting this invitation and thank you for accepting and allowing us, me and the viewers, the privilege to get to know you a little bit more. Because um, as I previously um, mentioned, I'm pretty sure that there's much more that you are rather than the pictures or what is on social media, right? So. Once again, I thank you. And um, let's start with the first question, which is a very simple, in, in my perspective, yet so very complicated question. Mm. Who are you? Oh my goodness. That is a very complicated question. I'll just <laughs> um, So I am Miss Courtney, or Mistress Courtney, and I am based in England, London, and Hereford at the moment. Um, I have been a pro dom for about nine years, coming up to my 10 year anniversary in 2024, which I'm very excited about. Um, and I am just going on a journey. How was this journey? My journey has been incredible. Okay, how so? Absolutely incredible. You know, I, I started as a pro dom. I went for a photo shoot at a dungeon and I remember walking into the Stockport dungeon um, which was run by Princess Lucina who was amazing, an amazing dog and um, being completely swept away by this wonderful atmosphere and I was asked if I wanted to come and learn the ropes and have a little Play, perhaps work in the dungeon and I thought at the time that it would be a very good part-time job okay. you know it would bring me a little bit of extra money on the weekends um, I was training to be a teaching assistant for primary school children and um, unfortunately I, I had a placement at a primary school which then fell through mm -hmm. And I didn't have a backup plan and I was sitting there and I was thinking, oh my goodness, what do I do now? And so I was getting ready to go and do my first session at the dungeon and it just, for some reason, everything just fell into place. As soon as I was there and started to learn things, I felt this energy and this excitement and this rush and this sense of, sense of power and achievement okay. um, and like I say I've been doing this for, for nine years now and five of those years was sort of spent really trying to find myself and to figure out where I fit in within the community because mm -hmm. you know you have so many amazing dom personalities right. and as I'm sure you can appreciate sure. small and blonde <laughs> I don't understand what you mean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not the uh, the traditional idea mm -hmm. of the dog, mm -hmm. um, but I think that's why it works so beautifully. Um, and I think I think my turning point, um, where I really started to find myself within. Um, within the Dom world was when I moved to London about three years ago. So back then you were not based in London? No, so I used to be based in Manchester mm -hmm. um, okay. and then Wales and I had I had a partner at the time who didn't quite understand what I was doing. Okay, would you feel <laughs> comfortable to go within that direction? Because I'm pretty sure there are so many that are facing this issue. They are interested in uh, BDSM, in alternative lifestyle, and yet they are next to a partner that either is not understanding, either is not accepting or enough open-minded enough to have the courage to 
get to know in this field and it's a setting for and they feel stuck tell me about your experience about this how how is it from from your perspective as a woman first of all? well you know when i when i started within within fandom i i was very unsure of myself mm -hmm. and you know the, the main thing that this community and this, this role has brought me is confidence and power which is fantastic but when when I was with my partner my previous partner um, he did not understand it he wasn't he was very happy to help me build one of my dungeons that I had in Wales um, because Essentially, he wanted me to be closer to home and not traveling to dungeons and that mm. sort of thing. But, for example, I could, he was never comfortable with me sessioning if he was home. Okay, so he was comfortable mm -hmm. with you being the professional dominatrix here. He mm. was not comfortable witnessing you being okay. And having it sort of within his space. Mm -hmm. And as I'm sure you know, you know, we're very fortunate, we have lots of admirers, we get many gifts, um, you know, it's incredibly hard work, but it's very rewarding, so financially, you know, the money starts to come in, and for him particularly, he, he really struggled with this, okay. you know, he didn't feel very comfortable with almost the change of dynamic where I was sort of growing and mm -hmm. blossoming um, and he just wasn't understanding it and didn't understand the dynamics behind um, you know why people have kinks and all the individual kinks so after a few years we I personally I got to the point where I was at a crossroads and I could either stay um, and just have my little life and do my few sessions and be comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, or I could go and explore something that I really actually love that gives me so much happiness. Um, how about the fact that he was having this, um, this point of view made you feel? I think that one of the main things actually and I wanted to touch on this um, because my my parents know what I do my family know um, but he was not comfortable telling people what I did mm -hmm. so it was always a secret there was it, it was always hidden there was always somebody asked me about work you know brush that let's move on to the next mm -hmm. conversation um, and so there was, it was almost felt as if there was something to be embarrassed of, okay. something to be ashamed of because I was with somebody who, who wasn't comfortable and who didn't want people knowing. Um, and I'm very proud of what we do, you know, it's, it's amazing. And so that was a very repressing feeling mm -hmm. that I'm doing something that is so empowering, yet I can't share it and I can't allow it to grow. Um, and so that's when I sort of, I thought, right, we're not right for each other, you know. Um, and as difficult as it was, I, I made the decision that, you know, it would be best if we went our separate ways. And he's very happy now, he has a wife and a baby, and they live a beautiful, lovely little life. Okay. Did it make you second guess that you made the right decision to follow your path? Never. Because sometimes we hear um, people around us expressing their opinions, if, even if we don't ask, if there's something that is happening, we have to admit this. And at some point, these opinions, these advices can influence us and make us. Um, so, you know, having people, somebody that essentially I was in a very close relationship with, second guess what I was doing um, and make me feel as though what I was doing was not okay, something to be ashamed of. Something shady. Yes. You know, it's kind of underground, it's hiding, it's not okay. Um, and it didn't allow me to 
really reached my full potential. And I always felt it at all. Something is holding me. Yeah. And you know, it's not a nice feeling because you get excited. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a great session, you meet somebody new, you get a lovely gift, you do an what amazing thing. What do you do when they start? What they discovered more or less. Exactly. So I made the decision. I thought, okay, you know, this isn't working. We're not happy. I have somehow ended up on this path that I, I didn't anticipate this. You know, and it's wonderful and I'm, I'm enjoying it and. So we, we separated and I moved to London. And the first time I sort of I set up my own dungeon um, and opened opened my mind to really deciding what I wanted to do. You know, what are my favorite kinks? What do I get the most buzz out of? What what do I love doing the most? Do I love filming? Do I love sessioning? Well, I love both. So mm -hmm. let's do both. And um, and eventually, actually, I met I met my current partner, who um, had no idea what a dominatrix was at all. At all. Wow. Okay. No idea. And um, and our first date, actually, he came to meet me at what was the Hoxton Dungeon mm -hmm. because I was I was there on tour. Um, and um, I might ask you some questions also, but <laughs> let's continue. <laughs> So, did you feel comfortable to tell him right away, who are you, what are you doing in? Well, so, so obviously I had separated and in my mind I had decided that if I was going to allow somebody new in my life, they would have to be comfortable with what I did. Um, I personally did not want somebody who was you know, very, very submissive and into a lot of kinks and um, because I didn't want to sort of feel like I was playing all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and to be honest, when, when I met met my current partner on, on the dating app, I thought it would be fun. Okay. And I thought, let's, I'm just going to have a little bit of fun. And, but I had had it in my mind that whoever I invited into my life, had to be comfortable with it. And if they weren't, they could go. I think that's, that's a very <laughs> important um, start. Mm. You have to be honest. You can't build a long-term relationship mm. if you're not being true to yourself, first of all, and with your partner. Mm. You can lie for a short period of time, especially in, in our field, because eventually you will have some crop or in one bag or in one corner and he will find out <laughs> and how do you explain? They're just complicating yourself. And it makes it worse when exactly. they do find out. Exactly. Um, so I, although on my dating profiles I did not put dominatrix because that would mean that I was inundated with, you know, um, work essentially. Mm -hmm. Um, and so when I, so on the day that we were supposed to meet, I said I want to do a WhatsApp video call because I want to make sure you are mm -hmm. who you are. And, um, and we phoned and I said, I want to let you know that I, I'm a dominatrix. Um, and I'm currently at a London fetish dungeon. Um, and this is who I am. If you want to come meet me, you can meet me. And if not, no problem. Anyway, obviously, he was very excited to come to the dungeon. I think more excited to come to the dungeon Stop than right me. <laughs> How did you feel when she told you that she's a dom and... Um, more interested, by now. What part of that interests you? The well, part that she was honest or the part that she was a dominatrix? Well, I mean, partly both. I mean, the most, most intriguing things that obviously I've never experienced or seen, you know, that kind of, you know, my, my kind of vision of a uh, dominatrix was mm -hmm. latex and you know people tied up that was as far as it okay. kind of went you know um so yeah, i was quite you know and she said she was at a dungeon so i thought you know don't see those things every day this you know, right <laughs> some people never do in a lesson go 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 and find out a bit more I'm, 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 I'm kind of a person that likes to expand their knowledge you know of, of Different, different subjects. So I thought we'd you know, go and if it works out, it works out. But you know, if it doesn't, I, I know what a dungeon looks like. And... Okay. 
a very so, healthy mindset, I have to mm. <laughs> He's very open-minded and very relaxed. So how was it for you to have him there? Uh, well, um, he came for the date and um, stayed with me for four days. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so that kind of situation, he came and never leave. And he just, he, yeah, he just didn't leave. He was just there and um, part of the furniture. Um, and we kind of, we dated and flirted for a, a couple of months and I decided I was moving to London and I was packing my things up and, you know, finding finding a, a place to move to. And, um, and then we sort of sat down and we said, okay, you know, we, we quite like each other were going to be a little bit serious um, and he then went and told his parents and his grandparents that he is dating a dominatrix. Congrats! <laughs> <laughs> and that makes a lot of courage to do. Yeah, and, um, and you know his, his grandmother said, what's a, what's a dominatrix? And apparently just tells her friends that I put people in cages. That's, oh. <laughs> that's the description that, um, that the grandmother uses. Um, and you Can know, I borrow your grandma? <laughs> she's great. <laughs> she's great fun. Um, and you know, kind of what, nearly five years on, um, you know, his parents come to my house, my slaves are there, we all have dinner together, um, his grandparents have met their slaves, you know, everybody is very incorporated into my life because I. <clears throat> was very much of the the mindset that this role gave me the most amazing opportunity ever. It changed my life completely. You know, I can travel, I'm financially independent, I have amazing things, I've met the most beautiful, intelligent, funny ladies, and you know, I have the wonderful privilege of being able to bring people's hidden fantasies to life. You know, things that they are not comfortable with sharing with anybody else. I get to be a part of that. At some point, I used to say that from on, on my case, BDSM saved me also because it showed a different side of me that I was actually the real. Yes. So before that, I had, because Romania is still uh, close-minded, they started to open mind a little bit, but still there are certain subjects that are taboo, sex from this country, so etc., all that um, situation. And in the moment that I fully embraced BDSM, I realized that I was actually like this from the beginning, since mm -hmm. I was born. Yes. I, I was born dominant. <laughs> But then society suppression, you know, you have to be, especially when you're a girl, a woman, yes, and you're in your um, teenage years, you hear often that you have to be nice, you have to be sweet, you have to not be that smart, but be smart, not to be too opinionated, not to be etc. So um, also for me was like saying myself, yes. you get put in a box as a teenager. Don't you, you have to stay box. in a box. Yeah, you have to stay in a box. If you go outside of the box, uh, that's that's unusual. Yes, and you know, and I think as a teenager, you're so unsure about mm -hmm. the world and yourself and your life, so you try and make yourself fit into mm -hmm. this kind of idea of an ideal woman. Mm -hmm. You know, to be able to then find a husband, have baby, settle down. And do how was the, the normal? How was the teenager, the, the corgi in teenager? <laughs> um, I was, uh, I, I was, I was wild. Okay, explain yeah. what. <laughs> so I loved to party. I was jetting off and doing different things. I was all over the place, and um, but I was very unsure of myself, you know. And I was always meeting new people and trying to kind of change myself to fit in with their idea of a friend, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Um, and I don't do that anymore. Wasn't that tiring? Yes, very tiring. And sad as well, you know, very sad. Um, and I spent my early 20s being very unsure of, of life and what I wanted to do and where I was going and, and the people in my life. And um, 
and now I don't have any of that, you know, and it's, if somebody likes me, they like me, if they don't, you know, there's nothing, I cannot change their perception. I am not in control of other people's feelings. Wow. This is so powerful what you just said, and we often don't pay attention to this because we get carried away and we want to be liked by everyone. It's okay not to be liked by everyone. Um, tell me, how, how was your childhood? My childhood was What great. kind of childhood were you? <laughs> I was a very quiet child. Okay. So I was always in the background and I always looked a little bit sort of somber and calculated. Mm -hmm. I was always watching everything. My parents, um, my parents are, are wonderful. You know, my they're very dedicated. My parents spent six years building a yacht um, in their back garden in South Africa. So my mother, uh, she was South African. My father's English. So you were raised where? Uh, both. Well, I was in South Africa until I was about eight mm -hmm. because they had then finished the yacht. And we sailed from South Africa, across the Atlantic Ocean, up Brazil, into the Caribbean, and then I grew up in Antigua. So, and then when I was 16, I came to England to, to further my studies. And, um, do you often go back to Africa? Do you still have? Yes, I go, uh, I, before COVID I was going twice a year. Mm -hmm. Now I sort of try and go once a year. Um, I have aunts and uncles. My grandfather, unfortunately, is no longer around. Um, but my grandmother is, and she used to write a sex column. Okay. So she she was a journalist, and um, <clears throat> so my family is very free and accepting and open-minded. Most of them. Not Did that them. help you in your process, having their support and them being mm. so open-minded? Absolutely. It made things easier. Absolutely. I mean, my unfortunately, my mother died last year, but you know, she was she was there from the beginning. You know, where I phoned her and I said, "Oh my goodness, I went I went to a dungeon. You know, a dungeon where they have all this furniture and these dildos and these torture devices, and it was amazing." And um, and she was always in my corner, you know. And she she was very happy because. It made me so independent, you know, and she always, um, she, that was kind of her favorite thing about what this industry has done for me, mm -hmm. created that independence. But, um, you know, I would phone her and tell her about my sessions and send her photos and say, oh my goodness, look, I put fish hooks through this thing today or I did you know this caning session and so so it was really amazing to have somebody that was so accepting um, and they find it fascinating. Everybody did, finds it fascinating. Did any of your family members saw you in cool dawn on fire? I um I sometimes when I go there um, I do some videos, I do some photos um, and my, my aunt and uncle, they have a beautiful farm and I've, I've done lots of latex stuff there. And what's their reaction? They, um, my, my aunts love it, they think it's brilliant. My uncle um, finds it hilarious. Um, actually, just, they just find it hilarious okay. and just interesting and they, I think, for some of them, they're still a little unsure about what they can ask. Mm -hmm. And I'm an open book, you know, anybody asks me anything, I will tell you. Um, so there's still a little trepidation, um, but I am of the opinion now that those who want to be in my life, come into my life. You know, my home is open to you. If you need help, I am here to help need anything I am here but if you are not accepting of what I do then I have no space for you because what I do allows my life mm -hmm. and allows me to help and to open my home to you and um, this is who you are exactly you know my at the moment my cousin is staying at my house and pottering around and um, 
you know, he always he meets my slaves and he comes in my dungeon with me and picks things up and goes, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, finds it, most people find it fascinating. How was for your family? What's their perspective? Um, well, obviously, my mom, mom and dad said, you know, my, for, firstly, in the beginning, as long as you're happy, you know, we, we go really, you know, it doesn't matter what she does, mm -hmm. as, as long as you're happy. And then obviously, as, as the knowledge grew about what she actually does, and kind of, you know, she sent my mom photos of, you know, <laughs> okay. cane and set, like, you know, people's bottoms off, off their in cane. And it's kind of, I don't think, unless you're into it, you'll never truly understand, okay. you know, why they do it or, or that kind of thing. But, you know, they're, they're just finding it interesting, more the psyche side, I think, um, you know, how people can tolerate such, you know, Mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah, they, they yeah, as as as, as, as what I said, they, they, you know, more interesting, more 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 interested in it than. Was she ever afraid? Was was your mom afraid? Uh, did she ever ask you if you are doing that thing? That are doing, <laughs> or you are one of the slaves? Because at some point, and it's understandable, as a mom, you are interested to see how your child is being treated. Absolutely. Yeah. So. No. So. So I think she. It was obviously your mom kind of you know knows you mm -hmm. to a certain extent, um, and you know she kind of. Not directly asked, but from what we say and you know, what we do, obviously, Miss Bond has already highlighted that she wasn't looking for somebody that was, you know, submissive or into, you know, that kind of that kind of stuff. Um, you know, that's kind of been mentioned. So it was almost discussed without directly being discussed. Um, but um, yeah, she knows that I film. You know, I, I do a lot of camera camera stuff. You know, filming, so I'm, I'm actually in there. You know, with them, kind of doing it. Um, but yeah, not not actually involved. So she wasn't concerned about this. No, no, I mean, I think they're of the opinion as, as long as you know you're not hurting anybody, or this, you know, right. and everyone's. Unconsensually, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, right? Everything that happens within the BDSM spectrum is consensual. Yeah, so everyone's consenting. Yeah, then who cares? You know, it's not. You know, it's. Whatever makes you happy. And what about the friend circle? Because usually <laughs> the friend circles have a lot of things to say. Yes, I think my friend friend circle has sort of shrunk over the years, which um, is a good thing if you ask. Me. It's fine. I and to be honest, my bar one or two people, all my friends dogs. Okay. So um, I do have. Two friends who um, I see a couple of times a year, and you know they come and they think that it's hilarious, but we just talk about normal things. Mm -hmm. um, I think when when things started to sort of grow for me, you know, you have a couple of people who try and jump on the bandwagon, um, which is always difficult to do. And um, but no, my, my friendship circle is very small then. Mostly dons. Well, it open with uh, with their vanilla. Mm -hmm friends from the beginning and you let them know. Yes, I, I've always been very open and actually James' parents lived with us for nearly a year, didn't they? So they were living with us while I was going into my dungeon and I was dressed in my latex <laughs> and my boots and, and one day um, I think your mum actually opened a window and saw me leading, um, leading one of my slaves around in a, in a yellow hazmat suit and gas mask and um, <laughs> you know she's um, she's met producers like Squishy Sacks you know and she just can't believe how his balls can take so much um, torment and um, you know my friends have come to different events where Dons have been there and it's just very relaxed because again I that is my boundary that I have set. Mm -hmm. You know, this is my life. I'm incredibly proud and grateful for my life. If you wish to be in it, you're in it completely. Um, and if you're uncomfortable, then go and be uncomfortable somewhere else. You know, it's... This is a very healthy mindset that you're having in here. And 
um, that's one of the reasons that I wanted to have this interview because there are so many out there that feel in either embarrassed or ashamed to set boundaries and to say this is who I am, if you like me, okay, if not, it's okay also. So um, I'm, I'm so happy for this. But now, what I want to know, okay. what are your hobbies? My hobbies? What do you do when you're not spanking? <laughs> Because I know that you, you love spanking. I've seen you several times. <laughs> I love corporal punishment. Okay, we'll talk about that um, later. But my what hobbies. Are hobbies? What I, do you do in your free time? Not that I have much free time. So, so you know, <laughs> when I when I do have a little free time, um, you know, I actually like to cook. Okay. I love cooking and I love baking and I love creating different meals and having people sit down and, and enjoy meals. Um, I exercise a lot, I love going to the gym, and I really love going to different places and exploring parts of the world and just going on little walks and, and just visiting different places. What's your favourite place? <sighs> Ooh, that's Choose one. Difficult. I know. <laughs> that's very difficult. I think of my recent trips going to the South of France, Nice. That was my okay. Favorite. Why? Why? It just it had this beautiful, uplifting atmosphere. You know, when you go somewhere, the energy is just so beautiful, and the sun shines, and you just wake up, and your coffee is always great. You think it's the place or the people that are? I think that certain places have a magical sense to them, for whatever reason that is. Um, I've always loved, loved Europe, I love going to Europe, I find it very open and very welcoming in most places. Mm -hmm. To me, I don't know, a lot of people have always sort of said to me that the French are particularly... I know, uh, but they, they've always been very nice to me. <laughs> the same, I don't know. I'm speaking uh, French also, so mm -hmm. maybe because of that, but uh, even when I was speaking English, they were nice and polite and helpful. So for me, that side of very rude French people, I, I don't know. <laughs> Not exactly. Yeah. But I think it depends on the way that you're behaving. Yes. And, and how you approach people right. as well, how open mm -hmm. you are. Um, you know, I mean, I love going to South Africa just because. It is such a different atmosphere, you know, it's it's a friendly, jolly place and it's very, you feel very free there, mm -hmm. you know, there's not so much CCTV everywhere and it's, it's almost like 10 years backwards. You know, they haven't more connected to the place, place. it's sort of more, you're more grounded. Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, I've been to Berlin a few times, I love Berlin, it's just, again, I love going to places where you just feel like there's this energy, this beautiful energy that just sort of uplifts you and almost recharges you. Yeah, I think it's very important to go and recharge mm -hmm. because though <laughs> we mentioned uh, a little bit earlier, we live a glamorous mm -hmm. Mars and lifestyle, but we also work a lot. Yes. And sometimes our energy level is so low that we actually need time to recharge, reboot. Mm -hmm. um, so I think those are kind of my, my top hobbies. And how do you recharge your battery exactly? Me. You know, I find it very difficult personally because I find that I get almost a charge, a boost of energy when I have a particular session or a filming day or I travel to the OWK or I travel to wherever I'm going. Mm -hmm. um, and that actually really recharges me. You know, when I do something that I just love and I love some of the things I do. And I just get such a buzz and it makes me so happy that that is almost my recharge. I can <laughs> see on your body language that you are so... It's, what is the most, if 
I'm sure you have so many, but what is the most beautiful memory that you have? Oh. Can be cave wise and war wise oh, and when you love one. That is a very difficult um it's a very difficult question. It's uh, about knowing you, so <laughs> I think something that has stuck in my mind recently. Um you know, I went to the OWK, which is renowned for corporal punishment and pain and torment. And, um, I do not say the other T word because mm. I don't think we're allowed to say it. Not sure. Um, and I did a spiking day where people came in to spin the wheel and they were administered the amount of strokes um, that the, the wheel landed on. And I had somebody who was so nervous, they were shaking, I thought they were going to run out the door. And I said, I said, what do you want to get out of today? You know, why are you here? And he said to me, I really wish I could take a cane. Okay. And for me, I find a lot of the kinks are very mentally focused. And, um, and so I said to him, I said, we're going to do this together. We're going to do it slowly. And we sat and we had a conversation. And in the end, he managed to take 400 strokes in total, wow. including a new a beam that meant huge. And it was about, I think it was a hundred odd of the cane, mm -hmm. 120 maybe. And I used a baby cane, you know, I wasn't using my most evil cane. Um, but for me, I found that so uplifting because he was so happy that we had worked together and that I had enabled him to mm -hmm. essentially achieve his dream of life. Because no matter what activities you do, it's all about getting into somebody's mind and enabling them to open themselves up to the possibility of exploring their kinks. On a percentage, how much would you say that BDSM is um, mental, um, Mm. <laughs> um, physical activity and what level it's psychological activity? I, th I think it's it's mostly um, psychological. You know, ninety five percent. Okay, well, you know, I think that everything. You know, it's all the fantasy. It's all the brain. It's how they perceive something. You know, if they like black. You know, red nails, you know, like looking, you know, whatever it is, it's all about the mental stimulation. But for a lot of people who really want to explore their kink, you know, you have different levels. Mm -hmm. So you have somebody, they like feet, they want to come in for half an hour, worship some feet, you know, go about their normal day, you know, and they just sort of tick their kink off the list. And then you have people who really want to explore and be subservient to a dominant woman and um, to grow, and that takes trust. Everything you need is based so on trust. You can't do nothing. And time as well. Mm. You know, you have to get to know somebody and figure out their buttons, not buttons, but what makes them take and how to get into their mind in order to get them to take more. You know, I have, I have um, one of my subs, he's 70, Seven. Okay. And when he first came to see me two years ago, he said, I only like flogging. I will never have the cane. I'm not interested in any of that. I just like some flogging. Um, anyway, I saw him earlier this week and he took 55 cold canes. Okay, how is the transition from I only want plugging to <laughs> So we started to build a relationship, you know, I, I try with a lot of my guys who want to be with me long term to spend extra time with them, to go and do normal things, mm -hmm. going for dinner, going for lunch, going to museums, because it's, it's very good to create a connection. Exactly. And to be with them on that sort of vanilla level. And... Um, and essentially what he started to develop was this desire to 
he was getting his pleasure from knowing that I was happy and seeing my excitement and my adrenaline and my energy from when I do the things that I love mm -hmm. the most. And I love vlogging. Vlogging is very underrated. Yes, it is. You know, very, very underrated. But he then started to watch some of my videos and he said to me, you know, you love him. I said, I do. I really do love it. I said, oh, well, maybe, maybe, maybe we can try it. So what I do is I, I will take a little video and then I send it to him so he can watch it and he can see what's going on in the emotions. Exactly. And it's just developed from there. And he just said, I get so excited knowing how excited you are to be creating this masterpiece on my body. Mm -hmm. um, and he, he loves that he can feel me, you know, actively. And this is why I love CBT mm -hmm. and book accomplishment, because it's lasting memory. You're releasing yourself right there in your new community. And he can, you know, they can feel you for days. It's an ongoing thing. Um, and so it just sort of developed and it wasn't something that I brought up. You know, I am very much of the opinion that if somebody says to me, my kink is this, I will stick to it. Boundaries and limits are very important to this. And one thing that I really want to note in here and for everyone, be very clear with your boundaries. Know your boundaries or if you don't know them, say it. Because we are not mediums, we don't know, we might figure out or think, but we will never know unless you are being 100% open about it and honest about it, then you will get the most of the, the interaction of the experience. And also, it's a safety measurement. Because sometimes, um, I often found this in several of uh, my submissive, because I like call them submissives, oh, even though they are, it's easier for me to call them subbies. Um, they are embarrassed mm -hmm. or they are afraid that they will disappoint me if they have certain limits. Well, for example, I love booking mm -hmm. and um, some of them are not capable to endure the pain. So in the moment that they come towards me, I, you do whatever you want, I can take it. Okay. And when I'm starting to play, I can see that he's not actually able. So I'm, why did you say it? Because I was embarrassed. Because I was, I didn't want to disappoint you somehow. Mm -hmm. This is not a correct mindset. So if you are in within this mindset, change it. Be honest, be real, and understand that this is not well, it is until a certain point of fantasy, but it's reality also. Um, now, let's talk about safety. How important is and how important are the safety measurements and for a dom to know this aspect? Because um, in the recent years, with all the social media, this um, our domain has been so, so exposed. and written and spoke about it, but only if you have touched this subject, safety comes first. Absolutely. And, you know, I personally, when I have somebody, and they might have a fantasy, and it's an extreme fantasy, you know, they want to take a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. And so I always say it's very important, we're going to start here, and we're going to build it up within how you feel. So I use um, I use a level system. I say to them, on a level of one to ten, ten being the most excruciating pain, your limit. And I will ask them when you're doing things, you know, what level are you at? Oh, I'm at two. Okay, so I know I can push them a little bit further. You know, I'm at seven. Okay, we're going to push. We're going to come back a little bit. But I always sit and I have a conversation with you guys and I say, communicate with me. If you don't feel happy, tell me. But I, I, I feel their energy, and you, you know, you can tell when somebody's excited when they're taking it very well, when they're struggling a little, or when something's a little bit off. And it's very important to be aware of somebody's body language and um, you know expressions and, and how they are projecting themselves because they are in a vulnerable position. They are 
giving the power over to somebody else. And so that is very, very important. And, you know, actually, if somebody says to me, I have no limits, there's no such thing. I don't play with them because you are unsafe for me. You are saying to me, you have no limits. I don't believe you. That is an unsafe thing to say. And um, I am not going to put myself in this situation where you are not being honest with me. Right. Um, you know, I, I, I keep my client's identities strictly secret, you know, because that is part of safety mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to be discreet with whoever you're seeing. You know, you have to get consent to post photos or videos. You know, it's so, so important. Because again, somebody is coming to you with their with their deep, true self, and you have the responsibility to protect them and to look after them. You 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 nailed it. It's to be a dom. To be a dominant is a responsibility. It's not just play and money flowing and stuff. It's a huge <laughs> responsibility. Mm -hmm. So, um, what advice would you give to the new dawn? Mm -hmm. Oh, so much advice. <laughs> Share. First of all, um, so when I started, I was very lucky to work with um, Princess Regina. You know, she's very experienced, um, and and um, you know, so I, I was very lucky. But I also went and I researched, and I bought books, and I actually. Um, on various kinks, I go and buy um, videos of professional ladies who I know are absolutely experienced in a particular mm -hmm. kink, so I can watch and see what they're doing. How are they doing it? You know, for example, corporal punishment, caning, um, you know, you have to aim for the sweet spot. Mm -hmm. Caning everywhere, all over, is, is, can be incredibly dangerous. Um, so research, you know, there's so many books, there's you know, Reddit, there are websites that have so much information. So research what you're doing. And if you don't know how to do something, ask someone to teach you. Because I have never come across a lady where I have said, I'm very, you know, can you help me get better at this? Nobody has ever gotten to know, you know, or used it against, against me. I've like always tried to help. Yes, you know, so educate yourselves. You know, this is... This is not just something where you just pick up a whip and fling it around and, you know, you, you are responsible for the person that you are playing with and you really need to play safely. Um, so my, that would be my first advice, you know, gain the knowledge in what you're doing. It's so, so important and there are so many workshops, especially in England, you know, all across England, workshops and different you know, needle techniques, whipping, and, you know, go and do it. If expensive. someone would come to you, would you be willing to uh, show them? Like, so okay. For the, the new ladies that maybe are watching, um, if they would contact you, would you be willing to? Absolutely, as long as they contact me with none is a respect. Where yeah. should someone, regardless of <laughs> yourself, where should someone can contact you? Um, I so I only offer contact via my professional website. What is it? So my website is miscourtney.co.uk. Okay. And, um, and then my second advice to Dons, I just want to come back to this because mm -hmm. recently this, this week there, there have been um, some safety issues in regards to subs visiting ladies and, and the ladies not being safe. Um, you know, and Everybody within the adult industry is at a different level. You know, we all have bills to pay, we all have things that we do, responsibilities. But the most important thing is to have your boundaries set in how you accept your clients. So again, we are back to the boundaries. Back to the boundaries again. You know, so I personally, if somebody wishes to visit me for a session, they have to apply via my website. They have to fill in all of the information that I require because I can get a sense of them from what they've written, how they've written, how they've come across their experiences, other ladies that they've met. I only see people that 
then pay me a deposit by bank transfer and I require a telephone number. So already I have a paper trail. And this is not so that I have something over the client because again, we come back to discretion being paramount. Yes. Absolutely paramount. I will never discuss my clients or emails or contact details with anyone. They are, it is secret. But if somebody were to behave in a negative way towards me, to try and steal from me, to try and push my boundaries, make me do things I don't want to do, uh, behave in a dangerous way to me, I have a way to then go to the police and say, this is the person. Have you ever encountered such situation? Um, I have encountered ladies who have had difficult experiences with clients and the details have then been passed around and I have been able to look at those details and go, that was not somebody that I would have seen. Mm -hmm. because of X, Y, Z. So you really have to not focus on, oh, I need extra money this week. It is your safety. You know, you're inviting them into your home, your dungeon, going to go and meet them somewhere, an outpour. Your safety is paramount. Think about who you're seeing. Are you excited to see them? Have they approached you in a respectful way? Or in a way that you feel comfortable with? Exactly. Um, I would add up to this and listen to your gut. Gut your gut is is very Absolutely. important, especially after a certain period of time where you are starting to meet different people. Don't stop yourself. If your gut is telling you no, then don't do it. Don't, do it. don't see that person. Um, what about the self? The self. Yes. What's your advice towards that? <sighs> I think for subs that are first starting out, you know, they have a particular idea, they have a kink, they want to visit a, a mistress. Um, have a little idea of what you want to experience because going to a lady and saying, I knew, I don't know what I want. That's unsafe as well. So you already know kind of what you want because you found us. Are you into stockings or shoes or, you know, does whipping turn you off? Research the ladies. You know, lots of professional ladies. We have websites, we have social media. And I think my most um, my most important point is approach ladies via professional websites. Stop talking to random accounts on social media, getting excited, mm. thinking, oh my goodness, I'm speaking speaking to Mistress Courtney, I'm so excited. It's not me, I do not have time to speak to subs on social media. I actually, <laughs> yesterday I received this kind of uh, notice that someone was talking with me apparently. Mm. Without actually you know, have so much time so for this. <laughs> pay attention to the scammers only um, to know if a certain account is an official account or not. Go to uh, directly to the website. All the dons have their own website, and in there you can verify all the information that you have. Keep yourself in a safe area, especially on online. Yes. Real time is a little bit difficult to be scammed, but on online, this has become some sort of a normality, which is annoying for us and also risky at the same time. It's, I mean, I watermark all my pictures with my name, but then I have accounts that create saying, oh, Miss Courtney, back up. And, you know, I had somebody the other, the other day who said, who I actually know, I know this person, and he messaged me and he said, um, Miss Reese, I gave you some money on TikTok, why haven't you replied to me? And I said, but I'm not talking to anybody on TikTok, you know, you know this, you know where my website is, in fact, I think you have my telephone number. Um, oh, I think I got scammed. So my main advice is really think about what it is that you want to achieve from the session. Look at the different ladies, research them, find somebody that you feel offers the style of domination and the kinks that you really like. So if you're into whipping, find a lady who 
specializes in whipping. Um, you know, obviously all the ladies, you know, charge differently. Think about the fact that this is your experience. Mm -hmm. You know, don't be put off by a price tag. Find the perfect person for you because then you're more likely to have a positive experience. But go by the websites. Uh, what are your criteria of selection of your students? I think that, you know, let's let's touch on tribute for a moment because I think that there are there's a, a large group of people who think that we are lying around in money, mm. you know. And what if only you know what <laughs> makes sense <laughs> and how is this about them just you know, we are always investing in new equipment. I buy, I have a budget every month where I buy mm. new equipment. Um, you know, and I'm very lucky some of my, my slaves, you know, they send me things, you know, gifts, that kind of thing. Um, you know, I have I have some um, some personal slaves who contribute to my lifestyle mm. monthly, mm -hmm. you know, which is a huge help. But we buy our equipment, our clothing, the hairdresser, the nails, makeup, you know, our experiences, traveling, workshops, you know, putting money into, you know, new camera equipment, new lights. Mm -hmm. It is never ending. So, you know, to sit there and go, oh, well, you're very expensive, you know, can't you give me a discount? Mm -hmm. It's actually very rude because we have extremely high outcomes. Mm -hmm. And you will see that by a lot of the ladies who have their own dungeons. It is a big investment, you know. And obviously it's our choice, but you need to be respectful of that. They have to be aware of this side. Majority of them, they are not aware of this side. And when they hear how much is to run a dungeon, mm -hmm. uh, they run from the hills. They would never think about this, this amount. And also, the, the outfits, the attire, the, the, the image mm -hmm. that we have costs monthly. Yes. Not just once a <laughs> week. <laughs> weekly. <laughs> you know, I wish I woke up and looked like this every day. You know? Oh, you <laughs> oh I do. Yes. So. <laughs> I, I roll out of bed in my satin and my, my nylons. Um, um, you know, so I suppose when it comes to so going back to your question, stress, what I what I look for in in a potential client, let's say, is first of all, the thing that I really enjoy the most is when I get the feeling that somebody has researched me. Mm -hmm. They've put time and energy into looking at my information, a little bit of my content. And so they really feel as though we're a good match already. How does that make you feel? It makes me feel like I want to give them my time because they've already put time in mm -hmm. into thinking about me. So okay. again, sorry to interrupt, mm -hmm. time is precious. Exactly. And we appreciate time. Exactly. And our time on earth is, you know, it's limited. Mm -hmm. So who we choose to spend our time with is very, very important. And you know, so that that for me is is sort of the main thing. You know, I have some people where they'll email and say, "Oh, what's your tribute?" or "Where are you based?" I know immediately you haven't even bothered to read my website. The one thing as a new client that you should do is read a website in full. If you can't be bothered to do that, I will not be bothered to waste my precious time with you. That's it. Um, you know, I really, I really appreciate when somebody has a kink that we want to explore and they want to do it slowly and, you know, they want to go on a journey. Mm -hmm. I like to go on a journey. This is a journey, guys. Exactly. And it's, you know, you start here and you just build mm -hmm. up this beautiful, amazing thing. But that takes time and energy. Talking about this, I want to make a parallel with the woman that you are now and the woman that you were before fully in the OG. How was the woman back then and how is the woman that you are now? Oh, I'm completely... It's like chalk and cheese. Okay. You know, I... Um, prior to being involved in this industry, I wasn't able to set boundaries. Setting boundaries for me was very difficult because I was always worried that if I said, oh, no, I don't want to go there, that I would then be left out or, you know, I would upset somebody. 
Now, if I don't want to do something, I don't do it. So, completely different. But this, again, this has just completely saved me and been a very special thing because it's allowed me to have such confidence and happiness and being able to set boundaries, which is so important. And on a deeper level, mm. on a soul level, mm. how was it? Just my soul shines now. Oh, that's what I mean. So before it was a little dark, it was a little sad, it was a little like eel, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and now I'm like Tigger. <laughs> How do you see yourself in the next 10 years? So, I have a couple of projects going on. I am currently renovating my house in the country with my dungeon and my prison cells. I would really love to get that finished. Okay. It's taking a long time. <laughs> so if people want to help, they are welcome. They are absolutely very welcome to help. Um, you know, I have sort of one prison cell building. I'd like to have multiple prison mm -hmm. cells um, and another dungeon. I would like to buy um, two properties abroad in different countries. Um, and I would actually, I would really love to open a dungeon that ran workshops for women where they could come in and learn and then do their own sessions. But time is very limited. So for the moment, I have no plans on retiring or okay, so staying back. If you're back. ever wondering <laughs> about this, no, you are not. She's still, she's I staying. Am going. She's here to stay. I am on my way. <laughs> I am climbing that ladder. Um, and I would just love to travel and meet different people and have beautiful experiences, you know, where you, you come home after a trip or an event or meeting somebody and you just think, that's amazing. That is so amazing because that's what life is all about, mm -hmm. having beautiful experiences. Right. And on a personal level? Mm -hmm. Pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> to know what people have to expect. <laughs> I... I would just like to develop my skills even further. There are still things that I want to learn and to get better at and um, I just I want to be healthy as well. What is the most important thing that your partner has taught you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's looking very pleased with himself. I think we need to bring him down. Okay. You know, go go and get in the cage. Get out the way. Um, I think the most important thing is that he has completely and totally accepted me for me. Never tried to change me. Never tried to say, "Oh, I don't like this" or "I don't like that." Just complete and total acceptance, and that is the best thing because we are all individual. Right. We all have our good days, we have mm -hmm. our bad days, mm -hmm. and the people in our lives need to accept us. It's just us. Wow. What is your legacy, or what would you like to be your legacy? I did ask this, I didn't think about it. <laughs> I should have thought about the it. The thing is, <laughs> um, this is like a, a um, free, discussion type of interview so she asked me about the question and i told her i don't have any mm. it's one spot it's go spot. anywhere um, <laughs> i think i think my or let me put it uh, let me make it easier for you what would you like people to associate you with i think i always like when I, somebody says to me, I love how much you cared about me. And so I think that is something that I would always do because even if I am, because I'm naturally a saver, so I get such a buzz from, um, from, being, from engaging in sadistic things. But I care about everybody in my life. So I think caring, being a caring, Sadist, 
Oh, there we go. Oh, Karen that's says, an interesting there we combination. Go. <laughs> <laughs> but I totally understand what you mean. The aftercare and the 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 importance that someone mm-hmm. has is is managing. Uh, and this has just I have to say it. Um, if someone is a submission, if a man is a submissive, mm-hmm. is not our doorstep. Mm-hmm. Is not like a trash. We still appreciate as a person, as a human, as an individual. So if you are submissive, that doesn't mean you're trash or a doormat. So where do people can find you? You mentioned your website. Can you repeat it again? Okay. So my website is misscourtney.co.uk. I also have a new one coming out, which is mistresscourtney.com. So .co.uk. Um, that is launching soon um, mm-hmm. to sort of show that I am going down the path of specialising in CP and CBT. On Twitter, I actually, what I did was I bought my domain names. Okay. So that if, because social media, they don't really like us, you know, mm-hmm. Twitter, Instagram, they like to close us a lot. So what I have done is I have connected my professional websites to... Uh, www.misscourtneytwitter.com, misscourtneyinsta.com, misscourtneyvlog, v-l-o-g.com, and misscourtneytiktok.com. TikTok (laughs) makes me feel so Let's talk a little bit about uh, (laughs) about this uh, social media. How is it for you? How is your experience with social media? I... I love social media, I love how it's opened up our industry Mm -hmm. Um, and I feel as though there's a lot of acceptance or a lot more acceptance, shall we say. Um, It it is so... What's the word? Time consuming. And it, 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 no, not time, it is so consuming. You know, and I feel as though people, a lot of the time, they, they follow social media and they get this image, this mm-hmm. idea, you know, and it's not reality. Social media is not reality. It's just an opportunity to showcase little parts of people's lives. I think that's really important. Um, I do hope that platforms become more accepting of us and You know, recently um, there's been a lot of backlash regarding some of the platforms not accepting BDSM practices Mm -hmm. when it comes to videos. Mm -hmm. Um, And I would really love, you know, for people to, or platforms and the industry to kind of recognize that what we are doing is consensual. Mm -hmm. And one important aspect, if you are not putting it on the platform that doesn't mean in real time it's not happening. Exactly. You, you better have it on display and know what you expect so people can fully understand the phenomenon rather than put it underground mm-hmm. and they risk not to get the proper information. Exactly. And it comes back to safety. So exactly. If, mm-hmm. if it's there and we have to be open and talk about it and build it up and, and almost educate have you ever felt discriminated by the social media? Absolutely. Oh, I've had so many Instagram accounts. Okay. Oh, you know, Instagram it, just... Instagram is <laughs> it's our worst enemy. <laughs> Regardless of what we are posting, oh, Instagram is just like taking it down. Just, I mean, I've got to the stage now where for Instagram, I only post myself or mm-hmm. other ladies. I do not post any slaves. Um, nothing with too much nudity, nothing with the whip, nothing with the device. <laughs> Me in my outfits and that's it. That is kind of my thing with Instagram. Twitter, I love Twitter. I've always loved Twitter. And um, I really hope that uh, Mr. Musk continues to allow us to flourish. Well, he's quite unpredictable, so yes. I, I reserve. <laughs> <laughs> we shall see, you know, because I love being able to, you know, if I do a, an amazing, um, you know, bondage session or something, being able to sort of show it mm-hmm. because I'm excited. I'm going to share it. You know, and it is exciting having just that control and that power and the ability to create this beautiful scene Mm -hmm. because that essentially is what a session is it's creating a scene isn't it and um, so I hope that um, 
that Twitter will continue it's by TikTok, like I say. TikTok is it. it's, it's interesting. <laughs> it's um, once you get to understand the platform, mm. it's quite catchy. Yeah, I often spend quite a lot of time to my embarrassment. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't help myself. It's consuming, isn't it? Is. it is. <laughs> So, uh, what are your plans for uh, your next one, for example? Yes. What do you plan to do? Where do people can uh, find you? Where mm. Are you traveling? Are you touring? Well, I'm quite excited because I have my first 24-hour prison stay at my prison cells. When is that? Um, middle of November. And um, so that is going to be a huge test, mm. you know, to all the building that's happened, um, you know, the program that I've put together, because 24 hours is very, very intense. And, you know, my, my main thing is I love what I do, I love orchestrating it, I love being in control, but I always want somebody who comes, I want them to be equally happy mm -hmm. and sort of blown away. So I have that, which is very exciting. Um, but otherwise, I'm what am I doing? I'm going to Celestial Studios for the Halloween party, which should be quite fun. Um, and just winding down, getting ready for Christmas. And then next year, I cannot wait because I'm going to travel. So, okay. German fetish ball, um, vendor retreats, mm. you know, all of this kind of thing. Hopefully, you know, I'm going to just, I want to go to a variety of dungeons across Europe. And just go and have some fun with them. I'm pretty sure you will. Knowing you, you will uh, manage to, uh, to do it. And actually, everyone will witness. So, so. <laughs> it's to learn a little bit from, from you. I want to uh, thank you very much for having this, this interview. And um, if you want to say something to the, the viewers out there, feel free to, to share. I think... Um, I think that the most prominent thing in my mind at the moment is life is short, enjoy it, go and do things that you have always wanted to do, you know, book that session, travel to that place, meet that person, because we just never know where life is going to take us and it's so important to have amazing experiences, that is what our life is made out of. So, take the plunge, go and do something different, and enjoy life, because it can be fun. <laughs> if you make it, it can be fun. It's, it's all up to you. Absolutely. All Thank you very us. much. Absolutely. Thank you everyone for uh, watching this episode. Don't forget to subscribe, to comment, or to share, or to retweet, or help us grow the awareness for, for, my um, for my channel and to get more people to educate themselves and to see that there is much more uh, behind the image that you may see on a social media platform or on a website. It's just 10% maximum that we, we can put out there. And unfortunately, in the recent times, even that 10 percent has become less. But thank you. Thank you. thank you so much for having me. It's oh, been a pleasure. I should say thank you very much for having me because we are in Mistress Courtney um, private uh, apartment. So for me, it's a true honor and privilege. You can come anytime you like. You're with me. Anytime, you know, just <laughs> thinking with me, you know. It's, 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 I'm so excited and it's such a privilege to be involved in your channel and anytime you have any questions. And I think viewers, you know, message Mr. Sarah and ask her, you know, questions and ask her things, you know, because that's how we can mm -hmm. build on the questions. Yes. Thank you. Great. Thank you and see you to another uh, episode. Bye everyone. Have a